We're in business, guys. I think so, anyway. Maybe not, though. That looks rounded off, like somebody's been here. Or, no, that's a replacement line. That's why somebody replaced that line. Ooh, we're in business. This is a uh, SLT Dakota. I don't know what, what year. O2. Gray interior. It is a crew cab. This is a newer style. I like this these gauges better than the ones in the 99s. Cassette with CD. Overhead console. Anyway, quick look at this unit. Somebody's going for the door switches already. It's unfortunate. Uh, these are 16s, mine are 15, so good. Didn't miss out. This right here is what we need. Well, that was fun. I am so glad I brought that. I was going to leave that out in the vehicle. Um, why bother with trying to get those rotten brake lines off of there when I could just do that? Also save the connectors just in case. But uh, I think I think we only have to do this top piece on mine. I don't think we have to touch the actual pump. I think it's the relay up here that's bad. But we'll see. I don't know how that's going to go getting those out either. So... You know, but hey, we uh, got it out, so it's, yeah, bolt there, bolt there, obviously the brake. That bolt sucks to get at. I, here, I was able to pry that shielding for the wire harness out of the way to get my uh, quarter-inch 13-millimeter ratchet down there. But uh, otherwise, yeah, got it. I'm just going to make sure this stays like that and don't leak brake fluid everywhere. Otherwise, I um, stumbled upon this grill here. That somebody had taken off of that truck right there it won't focus yeah that one but they didn't take it now i can't find anything wrong with it so i'm gonna take it i still need to get the bottom piece i think i'm gonna go over there and get the bottom piece off of it too otherwise boom and I saw two nice headlights over that way. And we're, we're loading up, so we got what we need off this Durango. Which is very nice. Cool. Anyway, thought I would show you that. Very, very nice. Alright guys, so uh, I got the truck done. It's uh, roadworthy. I've been driving it for the last week now, so that means it's time to start working on the old Durango here again. And where we left off, we got the manifold off and all of the studs and bolts are in pieces, but they're all out. So I ordered a kit for it. Hopefully it's gonna work it should I mean I just have to figure out what goes where because I don't remember and then we've got this kit for the flange this guy right here and technically it's a kit for both sides but I only think I have to do one we'll see we'll see how it sounds when I get this manifold done and then we've got our gaskets here which I think this comes with both as well. Let's see what we got here. Yep. And they're identical, so hopefully we don't have to order another one of those. But that's all we would have to order if we had to do the other side too. So that's cool. This is what we got. I think, what number is this? That is our Felpro exhaust manifold kit number if you need this. And what is, what is this? ultra power and that's for the that guy what do, you, what do you what do you call this you call this pinion angle adjusting bolt 
Something tells me that that's not the right number, but who knows? And then we've got this Dorman Help 03125 exhaust flange hardware kit. Anyway, the, these look right. I don't know what what that's about. But we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's a weird number. And then we've got these four lock nuts for the studs, I think. I don't know, let's compare. I got a stud. I got a stud. I got a stud. I got a stud. And these go with that. I wanted to I set off a... There was a black cat and, like, firework that was in the dry and go. I don't know, I found it in there, and I was going through getting this stuff out, and I saw it on the seat, so I set it off. <laughs> uh, there's a nut. So, we've got a stud. It looks kind of the same length. Hmm. I wonder if I got the wrong kit. That's going to be a great time. Because um, we've got this exhaust bolt. Oh, this is going to go wonderfully, I think. And then we got this random stud. Did I order the wrong thing or did they send me the wrong thing? Then we got that thing. Well, fortunately, I should have looked at that earlier because that's going to be a problem. I know I got a picture of how these studs were the ones that came off and how they went, but here. Is it going to be a problem? Me thinks that's not going to be a problem. That's not going to be a problem. Um, ain't that many on there. What do you figure? The studs aren't going to reach. Studs are wrong, unfortunately. That's not gonna work, obviously. What did I order? Because it wasn't right. Dang it. Well, here's my next question. What's stopping me from doing that? that side. Looks like, what is that? That's for EGR, huh? Would have been anyway. What do I do with that? And what does this sit? How did this sit like that? No, it has to be for this one, right? Yeah. Well, that one should be a stud. This one should be a stud. And that one should be a stud. So this one, in theory, goes here. And all I need is two studs of that length. Right? Because that's a bolt. That's a stud for this. This is a bolt. This is a bolt. That's a bolt. And then this is a stud for that one. Or really, I could have one of these bolts. So I need something for like this. 
in theory. Um, how far will these run in to the manifold or the head is my next question because are these too long? What went there? Was it, I don't know, one of these? In which case, it's a little short. Was it one of these? I assume that this is the one that came from there, if I remember, which makes sense. Which tells me that these, right here in the middle, are going to be too long anyway. Let's find out. Let's see if I can get up here. Oh, this needs to be out of my way. Somewhere out of the way anyway. And I need to go into these middle ones. Is the threading even right? It's not even the right thread. What the hell happened? Whoops. Oh, dang it, guys. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Well, that's a curveball because I can't put this back on. That was what I was planning to do. All right, well, I got to go do some research again unfortunately well that's the number on the box that's unfortunate because that's not right okay buyer beware but they sell you in rock auto um that number is the kit number they sell you it is wrong it's completely incorrect um in fact when you look up Dodge 5.9, this is the only kit they give you basically anywhere on the internet. So, I don't know how that works, but it doesn't. They're not even the right thread. None of them are. Wait, it's just completely wrong. I don't, I don't understand what occurred there. But also a thing of note, um, I noticed that this guy is a different thread than the rest of everything i mean it doesn't match anything but it's a fine thread this just this just this one wherever i ended up pulling that one from so now what i gotta do is figure out what sizes i need from this mess and go to the hardware store and get me some bolts and studs and stuff cat what do you want Somebody wants in. What do you want, buddy? What? A little spook. What, Freddy? What? What do you want, a little spook? Okay. Welcome to the bolt drawer. Um, we've already found one stud. Well, it's not a stud, it's a bolt. One bolt that's gonna work. So I gotta dig through here, see what I can find. It's gonna be great. All right, so this is what I came up with. I found these two bolts that should work for that side. I got these two smaller ones that should work here. Hopefully they're short enough. And then I've got this one here and this original one, so I know that that's the height we need. So I don't know if we'll get enough thread grab off of this over here, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm also running these without a washer, and this has a washer on it. So I should probably space this one with a washer. Yeah, probably that guy right there. How bent that is. I don't know what that was for, but it's for this now. We'll run that there. So those are the same. And without the washer, this should be better. I don't know, hard to say. It should, I think it'll be okay. 
this now I'm worried about. Might need washers for this. But uh, that's what I found out of the spare hardware bin. And um, when I was talking about this one being the wrong thread size, that's for the nut. It sits like that. And we're just gonna run without the shield. It is what it is, that shield is shot anyway. And I don't have hardware. We're gonna run that. I just clean up the surfaces crudely. Enough for this guy to do his job. Alright, I uh, threw some PV blaster in those threads and I ran all of the bolts into their respective holes. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a tape measure and I'm gonna measure the gap there and make sure that gap will fall within the uh, size of the, uh, I don't know, the flange on the manifold where the bolts go in. Just to make sure that we, if we need or don't need washers for specific ones. I think I'm gonna get one washer for each of those. Just because all the other ones either have washers or they're washers built onto the head. But otherwise, I think we're good. Otherwise. And then now I gotta do is go down to that flange down there and cut the rest of that bolt off of that one and then I can put the new ones in for down there as well. Okay, so I'm up under the vehicle here and here's where our passenger manifold flange is. Um, the uh, bolt stud things were stuck in here and I couldn't get them out. Um, obviously they were seized. So I couldn't get a grinder up in there to cut them off either. What I ended up being able to do is get it down here far enough. I was able to get this bolt cutter in there and come off that way because they were already weak and if you see thinner in some spots than others so I was able to use that to my advantage otherwise I think I was gonna go in there with a sawzall but that worked All right, guys, manifold's in. Um, those are all 13 mil still, so same same size um, socket and everything to get these back off if they ever need to come off. Um, all I gotta do is get the flange down there, bolt it up so the manifold goes to the pipe going out into the rest of the exhaust. Um, I may have to revisit these in a week or two after driving, go through some heat cycles and verify these stay tight and retighten them if they aren't, if and when they aren't. Just double check on them. But uh, that should be good for the manifold for up here. So it's just down there. That shouldn't take me very long, we'll see. I don't know, I won't be able to film that just because of how crappy of a position it is, we'll see. Oh, these are cool. So that's gonna help. So you drop this down on top of the, on the manifold side, this holds your, uh, your bolt in place in theory we'll see how this works that's gonna be cool I think and obviously got a nut nice all right I want to get you guys up here so I got it in there hand tight I haven't bolted them down yet but uh was able to get them up there with the clips still intact so the way this works is for this back one back here I was able to get my hand in here all the way up there to spin the nut on while holding the uh, bolt down from my up here on this side by the oil filter. So they're hand tight now. Now I gotta come in there. I think those are 13-2. Um, somebody didn't check, but I've got the two for the other side still out that I'll check for sizing to verify. Then I gotta get some like long flex extension crap to get up in there to do them and tighten them down. But then um, 
should be ready to start and drive off uh, the uh, um, ramps, which I do have it blocked with another set of ramps behind the wheels, so if it, I don't know, comes out apart for whatever reason, it's not going to kill me, hopefully. So, but uh, yeah, look at that. Nice. So that kit was at least correct, so that worked. I do like those clips. That's going to make my life easier. I can do it by myself and tighten them. Versus having to have a wrench up there and four hands needed and whatever. So I think after we get this done, get it started on the ground, the next two things in order are I think an oil change, um, probably a transmission fluid change, but we'll worry about that after we get it working if we do. And then uh, probably check diff fluids and stuff and um, transfer case fluid. And then uh, brakes. And then after brakes, it's um, then we'll do transmission stuff, fluid, and uh, hopefully getting it out of limp mode. But we'll, we'll cross that road soon, ish. All right, we're all bolted in. I was able to get up there with this guy right here, a half inch with two extensions on it, and then a swivel joint on the end because you just barely need to swivel to get in there. And it's a 14 out of 13. Those uh bolts are anyway so let's go see if it starts and uh sounds slightly quieter that guy's still a problem but it was really loud because this flange was all the bolts were all rotted off hopefully i haven't looked at the driver's side it's oh you know you're not gonna look either apparently um so Doesn't look very good. But I think it's still there. Yeah, so it's not very good, but there's still remnants of a, a nut on the end of that stud. Kind of maybe holding it. We'll pretend it's fine until I fix the muffler and then it's not fine. And then we'll revisit to see what I forgot. I think we're ready to hook this battery up. Hopefully it's still got a charge. Because I don't know if it does. It must. Cold start. It's been a couple weeks. Oh. Um. That's running on four cylinders right now. Because I forgot to plug the plugs in. Also, maybe that muffler isn't bad and that was the exhaust leak because it sounds quiet. Um, well, it started on four cylinders, guys. I told you I was forgetting something. That's funny. Runs pretty good on four, how about that? All right, I'm gonna um, address that real quick. I knew I was forgetting something. That's why I said that. Cause I, I could just feel it, but I didn't know what I forgot. Um, now let's see uh, how I got one backwards. Let's see which one I got backwards. All right, we'll start attempt number two. Like it's missing. I got I definitely got two backwards. Um, and it's definitely the rear two I got backwards. 
So let's, uh, I'll swap those plugs and try it again. Just try to take three. Come on, sound good. No. Okay, I gotta check my firing order. I'll be back. Now that it's quiet, listen to that. Sounds like it's inside. It, I don't think it's the engine. I think it's something inside, uh, inside here um, by the flywheel. I think, I hope. Okay, try it. Very light. It's gone. It's gone. Gone. Huh. Nope, here it comes. It's coming back. I do. It's down here. Well, we're at least going to go get gas for it. Um, I think I'm going to fill it with gas. I'm gonna change the oil in it real quick. And we're gonna cross our fingers that it's just really thin oil and a worn out old motor. Anyway, cold start on the 93 here. All right. Oh. Bonus footage here. You've always wanted to know. Too hard. Takes too long. No. Very good. Thing. 15 minutes isn't long. Nope. And they're fun. So you don't realize you're learning a language, but you are. In three weeks, you're able to start having conversations. All right. And Babel's lessons are built. All right. Well, we know where the filter's at. So. Put you back under here. Somewhere. Yeah, there he is. I think that's at uh, 51085. This should be the same size as everything else. As far as Dodges go, all the caravans take that. Uh, my dad's director takes that size. Let's see if I can get it off with my hands. You think, you think I'll be that lucky? Well, I'll put you right there where I can see with the light and you can maybe see. Nope. All right, well, my phone's running dead. I ran out of the ability to use flash filming so I'm gonna get it off and then you know drain it and uh, put it back on depending on how it looks I just want to be able to run a little bit of new oil through it and then I want to change it again and then I'll put a new filter on and we'll run that oil kind of a I don't know a flush if you will okay so that's an old micro guard and I'm gonna go with my better judgment, and I'm not gonna run it. I'm gonna run this uh, Wix 51085 XP. Um, this is a used filter. It came off of one of my caravans, so it's a 10,000 mile oil filter that I know has less than 5,000 miles on it. I don't know the state of that one. So we're gonna run this real quick, and then we'll, obviously we'll change this when we change the oil again, but for now, this should this should work. I know this will work. That I'm not so sure of. Come on, oil pressure. There she goes. Um, and we're way off quarter tank, so that's good. It's got gas now. Plenty of oil pressure, actually, lots of it. But it still feels like it's missing. Definitely wasn't missing before. Hey, look at that firing order. It 
it did have these two up front backwards. I, I knew it. I knew it didn't sound right. Um, maybe it was just kind of not wanting to run because it was out of gas. So here, I'll get the flashlight on out of the way. Turn the dashlights on. There we go. Oh, yeah. And that would probably, hopefully, maybe contribute to the noise we were hearing, plus old oil, warm bearings. It was kind of firing weird. Make, oh, let's listen. I don't hear it. Sounds pretty normal to me. sounds way better. Look at that oil pressure too. Temp's coming up. Got plenty of charging. We are way off empty now too. So, and I put 91 in it too just to make up for that. I don't know. Being empty, not being run in forever and why not put the oil cap on real quick. Oh. What's that? There we go. Ah, it sounds way better. We're going to say that that noise was a combination of old oil and having those plugs backwards. Or, not plugs, the wires. Must be boiling something off over here, yeah. Pulling off the oil and stuff from those uh, manifold bolts. Did I leave off on these plinkers? I know that side works. It's this side over here. And it was, yeah, this bulb over here. That guy down there isn't playing nice. That's our next problem. Get that done. Do brakes. And then uh, once we do brakes, It'll be transmission diagnosis and hopefully fixing it. Nice. Hot, low idle, it's just about there. Just under 40 is not bad. Two and a half. We build all the way up, I want to say probably 60 or so. 60? Probably bypass. Very good. And it's nice and quiet. I. I thought the muffler was bad too. It's not. It was all that um, passenger side manifold. Manifold was leaking and mostly that flange with the busted off bolts now. Hopefully the driver's side hangs in there for a guy. That would be really cool. But you never know. Um, so that's freaking sweet. Let that run a little bit now. It's got a lot of gas in here. Let it get up to temp here. Sounds okay now. Oh, that had me worried. Yeah. Sounds
sounds good under here. Yeah, all that oil burning off. Smell it. Yeah, that guy's good. It's pretty good. I think that's valve train noise I'm hearing and not exhaust manifold leak. Alright, there we go. Full of something in there. You're full of foam. That looks pretty clear on my finger, but it looks pretty dirty in there. That'll get flushed when we do brakes. I do have the new ABS box here, or pump. I do have one. I don't know that, I think I just need to change this top piece. I don't think I need to actually touch down here, so I think we can pull this all off and this will come off, and then we put the new one on it. That way I don't have to mess with all the lines and stuff. We'll see. Looks good, battery held to charge. Hello, cat. 